Hi, I'm Gary here at Martin Lynch and Sons and I'm part of the customer support team here in store. And today we're going to be talking about the SDR Play RSP range of radio receivers. Now, who is this for? This is really intended for um, radio shortwave listeners and various VHF, UHF listeners, schools, colleges, education, that sort of thing. Maybe even venturing into sort of like government or, or whatever. These are just receivers. They're not transmitters. They're just receivers and they're incredibly good. They go from one kilohertz right the way up to two gigs. Some even have two receivers built in that allow diversity, all that sort of good stuff. And some also have um, improved filtering for shortwave uh, listeners and that sort of thing. So let's have a quick look at the specs. Okay, so let's start with the RSP1A. Now this is the most basic version. It has single antenna input. It's one kilohertz to two gigahertz. It comes with 10 megs of bandwidth, as they all do, and it has a 14-bit ADC, all sort of built in. It's also got a, on the antenna there, you've actually got a 4.7 volt bias T um, ability as well. So it's quite a versatile piece of kit, and that is all software switchable. The next one, I think, in the line would probably be the RSPDX. Now, this one differs slightly it has a software selectable BNC connection on that one and it also has um, an, an NF and sorry a low frequency and very low frequency uh, filter which is available all built in. The RSP Duo which is the, the, the top one now this one has two completely independent receivers now that's good on so many um, levels it means that you can use diversity, which is a facility often found in just you know, the most high end of receivers. So that alone is fantastic. But it also gives you a software selectable high Z input as well. So if you've got things like long wires and all that sort of thing, you can do right from there. Fantastic. This shares all of the same facilities as pretty much the RSP1A, but does lack some of the features that the RSPDX has, like the um, low frequency and very low frequency filtering and that sort of thing. And it doesn't have a BNC connector. Instead, it has this high Z one. Now, talking about software, the, at the moment it's STR Uno, which is available from the STR uh, Plays website. They are working on a new piece of software called SDR Connect. Now I spoke to Andy, um, which we'll go into in just a second, um, about the software and what is happening behind the scenes. So let's go over to Andy and just see what's happening. Well, hello, Andy. Um, welcome to Martin Lynch and Sons, all by the power of Zoom. Um, Tell us a little bit about the, the new software. I mean, I know you can't sort of say when it's coming out because obviously it's still work in progress, but what have we got to look forward to? Yeah, hi, Gary. Um, well, thanks for thanks for inviting me on here today. Um, yeah, no, we, we're, we're working very hard on, uh, on SDR Connect. Uh, we're getting very close to having the first, first version available for release. I don't actually have a date, um, but... Uh, uh, I know it's kind of longer than uh, longer than we expected it to be, and it's longer than uh, people are sitting sitting there waiting for it to be. Um, but uh, it, we had a minimum set of features that we wanted the first version to have. Uh, we're very close to having all of those features in. Um, we've hit a few stumbles along the way. Um, this isn't really the way we intended to on doing SDR Connect originally. Um, okay. We were going to start from SDR Uno, and uh, uh, and when we started to look into how that was going to work, so that that's kind of why we were saying it's 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 coming, it's coming. And then we started wow. looking into the, the the technical aspects of that, and the UI kit just really didn't. Uh, it it was going to be a heck of a lot of work just to get the UI side of it. Um, Better on, to start uh, fresh. across. Yeah, so we've effectively started from from scratch, which has obviously meant things have been delayed but mm. um the, but the, the there have been some benefits in doing that uh the, uh virtually all of the all the dsp code has been written from scratch so 
uh, we're doing things like we're now taking advantage of the GPU. Um, um, uh, so, uh, and uh, the people that have used it internally have said that the audio quality is better than SDR Uno. And given that that was one of the big features of SDR Uno, that's that's a good that, that's a good sign that we're going in the right direction. Um, oh. So. Like I said, we've got a few. Um, we've still got a couple of the, the the sort of key features that we want to get into the first build, uh, and then and then we'll get it out to everybody. Um, and uh, and what you'll see is that there will be a number of a number of releases. Um, so uh, the first release that we do, you know, um, uh, you know, I I imagine there to be a number of releases fairly soon after, uh, and we'll just keep rolling them out. As we get as we get functionality uh, into into SDR Connect, it's a very modular system, so um, we can add we can add add things to it without interrupting the core uh, DSP uh, functionality. So um, that should hopefully help keep the the number of bugs uh, to a minimum. Right. Um, but well, it's I'm been not, uh, it, it's it's been quite quite a process uh, doing yeah. this across multiple platforms. I can I can tell you. Right. Well, I'm actually looking at this uh, this screen now that uh, that we've got up, and it looks absolutely fantastic. It's a, a big improvement on on Uno, I think. I th yeah. So we've we've done a number of things. Um, we sort of took some of the things that were good about SDR Uno, and we've sort of dropped dropped some of the things that people didn't like. Um, so you can still uh, you can st if if you want to float the windows, you can still do that. Um, and you can see that they will, uh, you can dock them. So anybody that's familiar with, uh, with, with sort of docking software, mm. uh, can see that that's, that's sort of, you know, this is all fairly, um, so it's, it's, you know, uh, it's sort of the best of both worlds, really. You can still dock the, you can still have the windows floating if you want to put them on multiple monitors, yeah. uh, or you can dock them into a single, a single window and just have it that way. Um, We've got other things such as uh, like the VRXs are now much easier to add. So if I start the stream here, um, and uh, so there's a VRX, mute that. Right. There's another one, mute that. There's another one. And literally you can kind of just keep going and organizing them as as right. you wish. Right. Uh, so well, it does, that looks really, really good um, because one of the, the – the, the most common sort of comments I ever had was, you know, that people were confused by the multiple layers of, of modules. And this looks absolutely brilliant. I'm really, really chuffed. Yeah. There's uh, obviously we're still sort of tweaking the UI, but we're, we're quite happy with sort of the, the, the basic concepts of it. Um, we've got like collapsible menus. So if you, you know, once you've set up your mode of operation and how you want the, you know how you want it to look you can sort of hide some of the menus away get more real estate for the spectrum and the waterfall okay. um uh and like i say some of these other other panels that are on the side here they don't have to be here um you can uh you can get rid of them and then you can sort of uh you know you can make you, i mean you know it's 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 very it's, it's very flexible uh we still we're still sort of like i say we're still tweaking the ui we're still we're still um uh, make, making some improvements to it, but I think I think the core functionality that we've got in here um, is pretty good. Um, well, I'm I'm very impressed, and and this is going to support, as I understand it, this is the the aim is to support as many platforms as possible from this sort of thing. Or yeah, so it's a so 64 bit application across all platforms, so only 64 bit OSs. Um, but we've got Windows uh, 10, Windows 11. We're not going below Windows 10, um, and there right. are Sensible. there are there are reasons for that. Uh, primarily with the UI kit, um, right. it's not it's not really supported below Windows 10. So just to kind of keep things uh, simple, reliable. yeah, and reliable, yeah. Uh, so Windows 10, Windows 11, uh, we've got Mac OS support. Um, wow. uh, so I'm trying to remember what the earliest version it is uh, that we've got, but uh, we go back a few a few releases. I've got an old uh, 2014 Mac uh, Mac Mini that this runs on, so it'll run on Mac Mac uh, Intel and also Mac M1. Wow. Um, okay. We've also got uh, Linux support. Uh, again, sort of uh, uh, Intel x64 support and uh, an ARM 
uh, X uh, Arm sixty four support. So you know your Raspberry Pis uh, and wow. uh, stuff like that. I mean, we've we've um, we've been testing on the Raspberry Pi four. And, well, how, uh, how does it, it runs... you know, people are going to ask, how does it run on a, on a um, Raspberry Pi 4? Is it okay? Yeah. No, it's, it, runs, it runs really well. Uh, probably when you're looking at about 8 megahertz of spectrum, you're probably looking at less than 50% CPU load. It runs it runs very good. Like I say, we're sort of taking okay. advantage of the GPU, so um, they're sort of spreading the load a bit. Uh, and, um, yeah, it's just, uh, um, it's just been... Uh, like I say, when you start getting into the technical details of this, you can sort of see why, uh, you know, why things have and you know, just taken the time. In, just out of interest, you know, what what um, programming language are you using to do all of this? Is it, is it sort of like a all the C++? C++, yeah, C++ for all of the DSP core. Right. Um, that's that primarily where we're where we're at. Um, and like I say, uh, a lot of that, or pr- pretty much all of that code um has been re- rewritten from scratch so um wow. uh, but but i uh, but i think we need to stress that um you know we're not abandoning sdr uno uh it's oh. uh it will still be maintained and any bug fixes that are uh, any bugs that are found we will endeavor to still uh fix those for you know for the people who don't want to you know, don't have the, the the platforms or they don't want to use sdr connect you know that's, when we when really we good. When, when we release the first version of str connect it won't have all the bells and whistles you know it won't have scanning it won't have the scheduler uh all of that functionality is to come so, so that brings me on to the next question then with um with uno there's now a lot of bolt-on sort of things that you could get like modules or you know yeah. add-on sort of programs are you still gonna sort of entertain that with maybe third-party add-ons um yeah so SDR Connect's going to have um we're we're calling it just so that we don't kind of get confused we're going to we're calling it a module interface right so um and that will be available to anybody who wants to wants to code for it uh and we'll have some examples up of uh of of, of how to do that we'll get people up and running um so that they can write their own their own modules for SDR this, Connect. This, this is quite interesting then. So obviously, if you, if you're going to sort of uh, add little sort of um, you know bits and pieces like that for for basically anyone to write this, it might actually be a good little exercise in people learning to code as well and just get sort of something quite interesting out of it. I wonder, yeah, if, yeah. You know, I mean, I'm, certainly, certainly, I think for for, for people who are um, you know, what we'll do is it's just like we did with SDR Uno, we'll put up example code um mm. there is a there is a facebook group uh for the um for for plugin developers and we'll have a we'll have a we'll have a space where people who want to um or maybe just have maybe people aren't who aren't necessarily coders but they have great suggestions for for a particular module right um they might better to get together with some people who are great coders but don't necessarily have an idea of what you know of what a good module would be you know yeah. maybe be able to put these people together um and come up with something uh kind of really fun good. and interesting uh to do so that's right. that's the that's the plan um well and, look, I, uh, i'm really really impressed i just wanted to you know sort of touch base with with you and and you guys just to sort of you know put people's mind at rest there is still quite a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes you know nothing's ever as simple as it sort of appears you know it just nothing you know materializes out of thin air so it's got to be worked on and um but it is on its way. I think. But I, think uh, I, I, I mean, I've I've sort of seen. I mean, I, I'll be honest. I've had to sort of take my take myself away from from social media for the, the last few months because it's been yeah. it's been a, a little bit stressful. But I think um, we've we've basically one of our strengths uh, has been we're, we're quite we're quite open and transparent about what we're doing. And maybe in this instance uh, where we've sort of exposed people to. You know, to kind of some of the some of the stuff that we've been we've been working on. Um, I, I've seen some comments where people said that they wish that we hadn't said anything, and they just sort of. And then when it's released, it's released, sort of thing. But I, I think <laughs> can't I think please everyone. You can't yeah. you can't please everyone. I mean, hopefully, you know. I've, I mean, uh, I mean, this stuff. You know, it's it's difficult to do. It does exist. It it, it runs on all platforms. I've been yeah. showing it. Uh, I know Steve's been showing it at a few different uh, shows, and and I've shown it at, at, at some shows, and um, it's always gone down well. You know, it does it does run across all all the platforms that I've just mentioned. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, but like I say, we want to get to that minimum sort of subset of features that we've set ourselves um, because we want to make sure that the, the you know things like diversity and master slave mode for the duo. Um, HDR mode is working well on the DX. Um, yeah. You know, all that kind of, we want to make sure that, 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 that well, um, you've that got to get make all sure that, that functioning. It, you've got to make sure that the basic functions of all your models are, uh, you know, uh, are working. But otherwise, Absol- it's absolutely. Using it. So, absolutely. So, the hardware support, the minimum level is, is the hardware support. Um, you know, we're you know, getting uh, reading and writing IQ files. Um, you know, uh, there, there really is only a few things now that we're kind of we're kind of bashing away on. And mm. like I say, as soon as it's ready, um, we will get it get it out there uh, for people people to use. Well, I for, I for one am am looking forward to it. And uh, thank you very much for being so open and letting us know where 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 we are with everything because you know I think it, that's really really good. But okay, well look, thanks for uh, showing us around the software. Thanks for your time. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm well impressed. So there you go. Okay, great. Good, good to speak to you, Gary. Thanks very much. All right. Okay. Cheers. So I hope that that was informative and you enjoyed the um, video um, from from Andy and myself when we did that interview. Um, it was a really really interesting uh, talk, and I learned quite a lot um, about the software and where it actually is and where it's going. And I am really excited about seeing the, the new software. Before I go, just to say that we do sell all of the cables and things for this range of uh, receivers, so USB cables, that sort of stuff, antenna adapters um, for you know for the SMA and all that sort of thing to whatever connection you want. So don't, you know, don't forget to ask when you place an order. Um, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time.